In the chill of December 1777, the Continental Army, led by General Washington, made a strategic decision. The road to Valley Forge was paved with recent defeats, dwindling supplies, and a morale as cold as the winter air. The army was in a tough spot, to say the least. But Washington, with his quick mind, chose Valley Forge for its defensibility, hoping it would offer some protection against the British forces. Yet, the soldiers were unaware that their greatest challenge was not their enemy on the battlefield, but an enemy of a different kind, the brutal winter. As the army set up camp in the shadow of the forge, the frosty air filled with an uneasy anticipation of the hardship to come. The bitter cold, the dwindling food supplies, and the low morale, all were about to come to a head. Little did they know, they were about to face a battle of a different kind, a battle against the brutal winter. The winter of 1777-1778 was not record-breaking, but for an ill-equipped army, it was a formidable foe. The Continental Army, already beleaguered by losses and dwindling morale, was about to face a different kind of enemy. An enemy that was ruthless, unforgiving, and inescapable. The harsh winter at Valley Forge. The first blow came in the form of food shortages. The Continental Congress found it increasingly difficult to supply an army in the throes of winter. Soldiers often went hungry, their stomachs echoing the hollow sound of the biting wind. They had to rely on meager rations and whatever they could forage. The land was barren and unforgiving, offering little sustenance to the starving men. Next, they faced exposure to the elements. Many soldiers lacked warm clothes and shoes. They huddled together in makeshift shelters, their bodies racked by cold and disease. The winter was relentless, and the close quarters only served to spread disease like wildfire, claiming more lives than the enemy's bullets. And then there was the morale, or rather the lack of it. As the winter wore on, the soldiers' spirit sagged. The taste of defeat lingered in the air, and the word desertion began to whisper among the ranks. The soldiers were not just battling the enemy in the winter, they were battling their own despair. But here's the thing about adversity, it's a crucible. It has the power to break you, yes, but it also has the power to forge you into something stronger, something unbreakable. And so it was with the soldiers at Valley Forge. They faced starvation, they faced the cold, they battled disease and despair, but in doing so, they found a resilience within themselves they didn't know they possessed. Despite these hardships, this winter of woe was not without its silver linings. It was a winter of suffering, yes, but it was also a winter of transformation. A winter that would ultimately shape the course of the American Revolution. Valley Forge was a crucible, a test of endurance that forged a stronger army and national identity. At the helm of this transformation was General George Washington. His leadership was a beacon in the darkest of winters. Unyielding in his resolve, Washington kept the army from fragmenting. He was a tireless advocate for his troops, lobbying the Continental Congress for much-needed supplies. But his role didn't stop at the negotiating table. Washington was also in the trenches, right there with his men, drilling them, boosting morale, and ensuring unity despite the harsh conditions. Another key player in turning the tide was Baron Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben, a Prussian military advisor. Von Steuben's arrival at Valley Forge marked a turning point. With his European military training, he introduced a level of discipline and professionalism that the Continental Army sorely needed. He drilled the soldiers, transforming them from a ragtag group of men into a formidable fighting force. His training played a pivotal role in the Army's performance in battles to come. But Valley Forge was more than just a training ground. It was a crucible. The brutal winter, the hunger, the disease. These hardships were not just tests of physical endurance, but of the soldier's commitment to the cause. Those who stayed, who endured, emerged from that winter with a stronger sense of purpose and a deeper commitment to the revolution. What emerged from Valley Forge wasn't just a more professional army. It was a group of men who had been tested and had not been found wanting. It was an army that had faced the worst of winter and had come out stronger. It was an army with a newfound sense of national identity, bound together by a shared experience of hardship and a shared commitment to their cause. And so as spring dawned, a new continental army emerged from Valley Forge, 
an army tested by adversity, forged by hardship, and ready to take on the challenges that lay ahead. An army that was, in every sense, American. The winter at Valley Forge was a test, but it was one that the Continental Army not only survived, but thrived. As the snow melted and spring kissed the land, the soldiers who walked out of Valley Forge were different from those who had walked in. They were stronger, battle-hardened, and disciplined. The harsh winter had served as a crucible, molding a ragtag group of soldiers into a formidable army. The shared experience of hardship and survival bound them together, creating a sense of unity and national identity. The impact of Valley Forge on the American Revolution was profound. It was a turning point that shifted the tides of war in favor of the revolutionaries. More than that, Valley Forge became a symbol of American perseverance. It embodied the spirit of resilience and determination that defines America. Valley Forge stands as a testament to American resilience and the power of perseverance in the face of overwhelming odds.